Okay, so this is easily the most embarrassing video I've ever had to make by like a factor of 10. If you can cast your mind back to 2020 as if that time ever really even existed, you might remember I started getting personalized book recommendations via video from some of my bookish friends where they would recommend me a book they wanted me to read, whatever it is that they wanted, and I had to read that book. And here we are, it's the start of November, and I have done absolutely zero of these videos this year, which is embarrassing on its own, but what's most embarrassing is that I have had a specific video recommendation sent to me from my friend Simon for almost a year. If booktubing was my job, I would be, I would have been fired so long ago. Like I am so, so bad at this. But in my defense, there is a reason why it has taken this long and I will explain it after we watch the video. But for now, let's, uh, let's watch Simon's video together, shall we? And, um, and we'll see what he suggested for me. Hi, Rick, Simon here. Thank you so much for letting me recommend a mystery book to you, despite the fact that I'm not a YouTuber of any variety, uh, let alone a bookish YouTuber. Uh, as you can tell by the fact that I don't know what I'm doing with lighting and framing and anything like that, but I do know that I love recommending books to people. Uh, and I wondered how I should go about this, but in the end, I just decided to go for my favourite book that I think everyone should well, I'd love everyone to read. Maybe everyone shouldn't, but I'd love everyone to give it a go. It's the book I named my cat after. You can see a bit of my cat here. Um, and I know that you sometimes read fantasy, and this is very light fantasy, more like fantastic. Uh, in fact, I'm just going to see... Sorry, Hargreaves, there's a clue. Um, going to grab it off the shelf. It's a book Ooh. from 1940. Here it is. Miss Hargraves by Frank Baker. That might be back to front. I don't know how cameras work. Um, my favourite book, it's, as I say, published in 1940, uh, about a uh, a man who accidentally, who well, events this old lady to get out of an awkward conversation. She has all sorts of strange attributes, like a harp and a cockatoo and um, a dog, and she always goes everywhere with a hip bath, that sort of thing. Um, as a joke, he writes her a letter, inviting her to come and stay, and he's pretty shocked when she turns up. I think it's really funny, really moving, really interesting, experimental. I'm really excited to see what you think of it. Hope you love it. Thanks. So the first thing you'll notice watching that video is that he has Christmas lights on his bookshelves <laughs> behind him, which which tells you like how old this video. I'm almost. It's almost Christmas the the next year when I'm watching. Like it's. Ah, it's, oh, I'm so embarrassed. Simon, I'm so embarrassed. You were so sweet to send this along. It's your favorite book, and it's taken me this long to, to do this. It's it's awful. Okay, so why did it take me so long? There is a reason. Simon alluded to it a little bit in his video. This book was written in the 1940s, and despite it being Simon's favorite novel in the world, um, it's not the most popular book in the world anymore, and it's really hard to find, at least in North America. It's really hard to find, and I've been looking for it for months and months and months. The only versions of it I could find were like prohibitively expensive and I was just getting really frustrated with it and I, I talked to Simon a couple of months ago saying like, I did forget about this, I'm trying to find this book, I just, I, I, I can't find a copy anywhere. And then lo and behold, probably a month or two after that, I get a package in the mail and Simon has sent me a copy of this book and here it is right here. So I have spent the last week or so reading Miss Hargreaves by Frank Baker, and I am very, very happy to report, Simon, that it was such great fun. Further proof that I am just terribly bad at this whole booktube thing. I realized I did the whole thing without explaining who Simon is. Simon is my friend, and he has been running the blog stuckinabook.com for almost 15 years. I think next year will be his 15th anniversary. Congratulations, or pre-congratulations, Simon. He is also the co-host of the bookish podcast, Tea or Books. So please check out his website, check out his podcast. They're both fantastic. And uh, follow him on Twitter, Instagram, anywhere you can find him. He's just, he's lovely, as you've seen. I wasn't really sure what I was getting into, but was very pleasantly surprised at the fantastical elements, which actually reminded me of really two of my favorite things, a book and a movie, but I'll get into those in just a little bit. First, I'll explain what the book is, why I think you should read it, 
uh, what the general gist of the story is. So at the start of this story, this man, Norman, and his friend, Henry, are visiting a church. A reverend shows up to kind of tour them around, and they start to get a little bit bored. And so to entertain themselves, Norman makes this kind of vague comment that this, this vicar that the reverend has brought up, Norman makes this comment that, oh, I actually knew someone uh, who used to know that vicar. And then Henry, who kind of really quickly realizes what Norman is doing, they're kind of taking the piss out of this reverend a little bit, gets excited, jumps in, he starts to make up details about this person as well. Norman starts to make more details and more details, and eventually they've kind of created this, this, this farce of a person. Her name is Miss Hargreaves, uh, and she's the daughter of a duke. They start feeding the reverend all these like little minute details that are totally unnecessary. She has this small dog named Sarah. She has a cockatoo named Dr. Papush. The cockatoo is like 90 years old and travels with Miss Hargreaves wherever she goes. Um, Miss Hargreaves also plays the harp, like just all these details just to make the person sound real. And then just to continue the joke as far as they can, they actually write a note and send it to Miss Hargreaves at this hotel that they've made up that she's staying at. So then once the holiday is over, Norman receives a return letter from Miss Hargreaves saying that she's going to come visit him. And this lady is just like the picture, she's like the quintessential older English lady that I have in my mind. Picture in your mind an older, you know, probably 80 year old British lady. Close your eyes, picture her. You got it, you nailed it. Miss Hargreaves is in this shop and she's just so annoyed at how ugly all the, like the vases are. So um, she buys them all, like buys every single one in this shop and then gives them to Norman <laughs> and then orders him to destroy them all. And that I think is fairly, emblematic of the relationship between Norman and Miss Hargreaves throughout the book. It's like much of his efforts are, are trying to kind of contain her impulses. It's this kind of classic comedy of manners, I think, and, and Norman's purpose throughout the rest of the book is just trying to control this person that he has like created somehow. So I mentioned before that this book really reminded me of two of my favorite pieces of media that I've consumed in the last couple of years. One was Lolly Willows from Sylvia Townsend Warner, and the other was the movie Ruby Sparks. Now, Lolly Willows is a story that also tried to bridge this gap between like really everyday, workaday, mundane England and, and, and then a touch of the mystical or the fantastical. That's a story that um, very much feels like any other kind of classic you'd read from, you know, 19th century England. And then by the end of that story, it's, it's, it's become this kind of like witch's story. And then Ruby Sparks is a movie that just came out in the last probably five years. Maybe it's older than that. But it's about a young novelist who has a dream about this woman that he kind of becomes obsessed with. So he starts to write this story about her. And then all of a sudden she shows up at his house. She's this flesh and blood person who he has to deal with. And, and putting this book in the context of those other two really helped me understand, I think, what Frank Baker was going for here. Because through most of the book, as I was reading it, I was like, this is really funny and entertaining, but why did he write this? Like, what was, like, what's the purpose of this? I've created this lady in my mind and she's magically shown up in my life and I'm now dealing with her. And then when I compared it to Ruby Sparks, it just kind of, I'm sorry for this terrible pun, but it sparked something in my mind of the creative process. And I'm wondering if this book was Frank Baker kind of doing a commentary on just being a writer and what it's like to create these people in your head that who take on a life of their, literally take on a life of their own and you just have to kind of deal with them and contain them and, and, and learn from them and see what they're all about. They tell you as much about themselves as you tell them. At one point, Norman is discussing Miss Hargreaves and he says, I love her and I hate her. And then I think he even says like, I'm, I'm, afra I'm, I'm afraid of her, or I'm half afraid of her or something like that. And I've heard lots of authors talk about just like how frustrating it can be to come up with a character that, that has a life of its own. It's wonderful because it, it feeds all this stuff into your story, but at the same time, you have to kind of wrestle with them and figure out what they're about and figure out what you're even doing with them. Figure out why this person seems so important in your life. Like, why, why won't they go away? Why does your brain say like, no, I have to write about this person? But at other times, it didn't feel so much like the writer Frank Baker talking about character. It felt like maybe the father Frank Baker talking about 
a child, not only do you, you know, create a person and give them life and bring them into the world, but you tend to them, you discipline them, you watch them, you, you're curbing their behavior. And he's doing that with Miss Hargreave through a lot of this book. And at the same time, I think there's a lot of love and care that happens between these two characters by the end, but at the same time, Miss Hargreaves will just like turn on a whim and just act really petulant and difficult, and he has to wrangle her like a teenager. Like, like whether it's um, as a writer looking at a creation or a parent looking at a child, ultimately I think the story felt like it was about responsibility and having responsibility for somebody else, but done in a really wacky, whimsical, really fun, funny way. But at the same time, there are parts of the story that are really beautiful and kind of pull on your heartstrings and just moments that are just really, really heartfelt and sweet. I didn't really notice it while I was reading it, Simon, but this is a book that I think it's chalked up to like whimsy very easily, but I think it's a book that kind of runs the full gamut of, of emotions that you can get from a book. Like it's funny, it's really interesting, it's really sweet, but also like when she shows up, it's kind of creepy. Like it's weird and there's kind of tingles that are going on because you're just like, what? What is happening right now? Like you you can feel how Norman is feeling and it, it it's unsettling. And then the moment when Miss Hargreaves learns that she's this like fiction that he has created, there are like, genuine tears that can fall. Simon, like you've read the book multiple times, so please comment below or, or DM me or whatever and just kind of correct me. But I was thinking um, even this morning as I was, you know, thinking of making this video finally, is 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 the part of the theme of the book, be careful what you wish for because him and Henry make up this farce and all of a sudden it kind of comes back to bite them in the ass a little bit. Like it literally comes back in their life and they have to deal with it. And it, it, is this book talking about kind of the consequences of your actions. I don't know, like, that's the cool thing about these stories that kind of play with magical realism a little bit. They're, they're a little bit left of center in terms of reality. So like, what are they about? What are, what are you imposing on them? And I think there's an element of what was Frank Baker trying to do, but then there's, a, there, there's enough room in a story like this where you can put your own stuff in it. And I love books like that. Like, the fact that I can read it and someone else can read it and they can kind of see the theme differently. That's not a bad thing about a book or a bad thing about an author that the, the clarity wasn't there or something. I think that's very intentional and I, I think that's fantastic when that can happen. So yeah, Simon, I'm sorry this book took me so long to find. I didn't even find it. You had to send it to me um, and read and make this video, but I'm super thankful because this was like such a lovely experience. Like this is, this is one of those, it's like one of the weirdest poltergeist stories anyone would ever read, ever. And I read it at the tail end of October, the start of November. It was just like the perfect timing too. I think I was just right in the right vibe right around Halloween for, for kind of a story like this. Even though it's not a purposely spooky story, the like magical realism chilling element uh, was kind of cool. And it like, it, it, it kind of reminded me of like like Dickens a little bit. A Christmas Carol, like there's just like a just an otherworldly mysticalness going on. What I'm learning about these videos, where I'm asking people to send me a book they want me to read, everyone so far has has advised me or, or told me to read a book that they really love. Which like I do want people to send me some stuff that's like a little bit like like here's a book that I think you might hate, and I think it would be entertaining to watch you react to that. Or here's a book that I was thinking of reading, but I haven't yet, so I wanna test it on you. Or like, I want people to kind of feel free to send me whatever they want for whatever reason. But so far, people have just sent me kind of their favorite books. And what's been really fun about that is is getting to learn about that person. Like it, reading someone's favorite book is such an interesting way into their brain in a way that I feel like you can't really duplicate in any other way. Like people can, I, I, in my last video, I talked about how a person's bookshelf does that. You can kind of fake a personality in front of other people, but you can't really fake your bookshelf. You know, like, like the, the, the books that someone decides to invest in says a lot about them. And I think a person's favorite book says so much about them. And like, even like, 
stuff about them they might not even be fully aware of. And Simon, you're, you know, you're a person I just know through the book world. I know you through Twitter and Instagram and we've never actually met. We just kind of know each other through each other's book taste. And But reading a book like this, that's your favorite book, uh, that has all of these elements, but at the same time is like so British. And Simon, you are so British. I, it's the, it's the, the most entertaining thing. I love it. This book just made so much sense for you, I thought. Like a little old fashioned, really funny, cheeky, witty, has this really lighthearted personality, but there's so much more depth behind it when you actually talk to them and, and see what they care about. So I loved it. Loved this experience. Thank you so much for, for sending it to me. It was just, the, it was like the perfect Simon book. And, and how fun is it that you've named your cat Hargreaves after this book? I think that's just fantastic. So Simon, thank you. This was wonderful. And now is the point in these videos where I do a call out. I'm sorry it took me so, it won't take me 11 months to do the next one, I swear to God. <laughs> if you're someone who wants to send me a recommendation and want me to do one of these videos for a book that you love or hate or interested in or whatever, you think it'd be funny that I read, whatever it is, the rule is that I cannot say no. You have to tell me to read a book for whatever reason you have and I have to read it. You just have to send me a video ex you know, explaining what the book is and why you're doing it and if you, uh, not sure how to do that, how to send a video like that, just DM me somewhere and I'll explain. Uh, there's a couple of easy ways to do it. So, uh, yeah. I promise in 2022, oh my God, 2022, it's so close. Um, even by the end of this year, it'd be fun to do one, but if I don't get to it before 2022, I will be better at this. I, I, I promise I'll be better at this. It's impossible not to. As always, thank you so much for watching. My name is Rick McDonnell and I'll see you in a couple of days. Bye.